If you like sports, whether playing in a team or watching them on TV, you might hear the coach say, don't lose momentum or keep up the momentum until the end of the game. Deducing from this, it's safe to say that an object in motion has momentum. But how much momentum an object has depends on two factors. The more massive an object is, the more difficult it is to stop it from moving. So the first factor is mass. And it's easier to stop a tennis ball than to stop a bullet because a bullet moves so much faster. This means our second factor is velocity. So now we have the following equation. Momentum equals mass times velocity. We often give momentum the symbol lowercase p, mass m, and velocity v. This equation shows us that if an object is not moving, it has zero momentum. That's because its velocity will be zero. And we know that anything multiplied by zero is zero. Let's check our understanding so far. If a basketball player has a mass of 100 kilograms and he's moving at two meters per second, what is his momentum? Don't forget the unit, kilograms for mass and meters per second for velocity. So the units for momentum is kilograms meters per second. So far so good. But do you remember that velocity measures the speed in a given direction? This means that momentum also has a direction. Therefore, if the basketball player now runs at 2 meters per second in the opposite direction, his momentum changes. His momentum is now negative 200 kilograms meters per second. To summarize, momentum measures an object's tendency to keep moving at the same velocity. Increasing the mass or velocity of an object will increase its momentum. And finally, we have the equation momentum equals mass times velocity. Thanks for watching.